Let's learn some advanced English vocabulary by reading an article in the news. We will read an interview with the CEO of a well-known company. I will teach you the meaning of some advanced words from the article and we will read it together. You will repeat after me so that you can practice your accent. At the end, there will be a fill in the blank quiz so that you can test your knowledge and find out how many of the words you remember. The article is from Time Magazine. This year, AI has been a big topic in the news. Sam Altman founded a company called OpenAI. AI means artificial intelligence. His company developed ChatGPT. Sam Altman was selected by Time Magazine as CEO of the year in 2023. If you would like to read the whole article in Time Magazine, and watch the video interview, click on the links in the description below. There's a lot to learn in this video, so let's get started. Let's look at the headline. Let's look at the way the preposition on is used. Sam Altman on OpenAI, future risks and rewards, and artificial general intelligence. What does it mean if we say Sam Altman on? The preposition on is used to indicate the topic that the article is discussing. In this case, it tells us that the article is focused on what Sam Altman said about open AI, future risks and rewards, and the artificial general intelligence. The preposition on is often used in headlines to provide a short description of the content of the article. Here are some other examples of how we can use on this way. Exclusive interview on the latest developments in space exploration. Or podcast explores conversations on life in the digital age. And now let's look at the first paragraph. I will read it and then I will teach you the meaning and the pronunciation of some of the words. And then at the end, I will read it again and I will pause to give you a chance to repeat. If 2023 was the year artificial intelligence became a household topic of conversation, it's in many ways because of Sam Altman, CEO of the artificial intelligence research organization, OpenAI. Altman, who was named Time's 2023 CEO of the year, spoke candidly about his November ousting and reinstatement at OpenAI how AI threatens to contribute to disinformation and the rapidly advancing technology's future potential in a wide-ranging conversation with Time Editor-in-Chief Sam Jacobs as part of Time's A Year in Time event on Tuesday. Let's look at the word household. A household is a group of people who live in the same place, in the same house, and usually it's a family. The article states, 2023 was the year artificial intelligence became a household topic of conversation. We commonly say household income, and that's the combined salaries of everyone who lives in a house, usually a husband and a wife who are working. Sometimes it's one person working. And we often say the household income in the United States, or the average household income in California is and we also say household expenses, or household budget, or household items. So household topic of conversation means that AI, artificial intelligence, became a subject of discussion among ordinary people in their everyday lives. Here's another very common expression with household. We can say a household name. He's a household name. What does that mean? It means he is very famous and everyone knows him. He has become a household name. Every house is talking about him. Let's listen to how some other people used household. He was working to contribute to the household income. The median household income in the U.S. is about $52,000. By the time of his death, Noah Webster was a household name. Making the NBA star a household name the article states that Sam Altman spoke candidly about his November ousting and reinstatement. Let's look at the adjective candid and the adverb candidly. To speak candidly means to speak openly and honestly, to speak directly. 
It's a willingness to be truthful. And some synonyms of candid are open, frank, honest, sincere, straightforward, direct, truthful. We can say, please be candid with me. Please speak candidly with me. Or we can say, we appreciate your candid feedback on our product. I had a candid conversation with my friend. And now let's look at the word ousting. The article says, Sam Altman spoke candidly about his November ousting. Ousting comes from the verb to oust. And that means to forcefully remove someone from a position of power or authority, to remove them from an important job. We can say, the company ousted its CEO due to poor performance, or the dictator was ousted. The political party was ousted from power. Let's listen to how some other people used to oust and ousting which led to the ousting of several longtime leaders. He knew that the Americans would eventually come for him, that they would try to oust him. In the end, there were not enough votes to oust Clinton. And now let's look at reinstatement. The article said he spoke candidly about his November ousting and reinstatement. The company OpenAI first ousted him and then reinstated him. If someone is reinstated, they're officially given back their job after it was taken away. We can also use reinstatement this way. The employee's reinstatement came with a salary increase. Or, she received a letter confirming her reinstatement to her previous job. And Sam Altman was reinstated after 770 employees signed a letter threatening to quit unless Altman was reinstated. And some employees did quit because he was ousted. To reinstate also means to make a law or a rule exist again, to restore to a former position, often after a temporary removal. For example, we can say, the school board voted to reinstate the music program. The internet service will be reinstated as soon as the repair team finishes their work. Let's talk about the correct pronunciation of the next part. AI threatens to contribute to disinformation. AI is an acronym. It's an abbreviation formed from the initial letters of the words. We must pronounce it as one word. And with acronyms, we stress the last letter. So we don't say AI, we say AI. And make sure that you don't pause between the two words. Connect them as one word, AI. To smoothly connect them, we add a little Y sound, a little Y, Y. So it's like this, AI, AI. Let's practice saying some other common acronyms the same way. Stress the final letter and say them as one word. The common mistake is to stress the first letter. So don't say ASAP, say ASAP. Say it as one word. ASAP, CEO, I spoke to the CEO, FBI, FBI, stress I, he works for the FBI, UCLA, UCLA, don't pause, PhD, he has a PhD from UCLA. And let's pronounce threatens. We don't say threatens. We say threatens. Hold the T, threat, threat. And then go directly to the N. Threaten, threaten. It's the same pronunciation as the words cotton, button, curtain. Repeat after me. Don't threaten me. I'm not threatened by him. He was threatening them. If we use threatens to this way, it means people are concerned that this might happen. It's a danger. It's a threat. And now let's look at the difference between these two words, misinformation and disinformation. 
Misinformation means it's incorrect information. The information is not accurate. Someone made a mistake, or they didn't check the facts, or they didn't know. But disinformation is incorrect information that's not a mistake. It's false information in order to hide the truth, or to confuse people, or to manipulate or to influence people, especially in political situations. And Sam Altman spoke about how AI, artificial intelligence, might contribute to disinformation. And now let's look at wide-ranging. Wide-ranging conversation. Wide-ranging means including a wide variety of subjects. We can talk about wide-ranging benefits or wide-ranging risks, wide-ranging changes. So if we say our discussion was wide-ranging, that means we spoke about many topics. Let's read that paragraph again, and I will pause to give you a chance to repeat and to practice your accent. Listen and repeat. If 2023 was the year artificial intelligence, became a household topic of conversation. It's in many ways because of Sam Altman, CEO of the Artificial Intelligence Research Organization, OpenAI. Altman, who was named Times 2023 CEO of the Year, spoke candidly about his November ousting and reinstatement at OpenAI. How AI threatens to contribute to disinformation and the rapidly advancing technology's future potential. In a wide-ranging conversation, with Times Editor-in-Chief Sam Jacobs. As part of Times A Year in Time event on Tuesday. Let's look at another paragraph. We will look at two common words that are used in a way that you may not be familiar with. I will read first. Altman shared that his mid-November sudden removal from OpenAI proved a learning experience, both for him and the company at large. We always said that some moment like this would come, said Altman. I didn't think it was going to come so soon, but I think we're stronger for having gone through it. Let's look at the way he used proved a. He said that his sudden removal from OpenAI proved a learning experience. When we say proved, or proved a, or proved to be, that means it turned out to be. It was different from what was first believed, from what was first thought. So proved a learning experience means, even though it was difficult and unexpected, he learned some things from it. There were valuable lessons from the experience. It turned out to be positive. It proved to be positive. Let's practice using proved with this meaning. We can say, I thought it would be easy, but it proved difficult. Or this year proved to be a difficult year. That means I didn't expect the year to be difficult, but it proved to be a difficult year. It ended up being a difficult year. We often say, it proved to be true. I didn't believe it, but it proved to be true. Let's listen to how some other people used it. And that proved to be a very important lesson for me. Unfortunately, that pro proved to be true. And that experience proved to be fundamental to the development of my character. It proved to be a valuable opportunity for me. Let's look at the meaning of at large. Sam Altman said, OpenAI proved a learning experience both for him and the company at large. At large means as a whole the entire thing, in general. We can say, the question is discussed at large in my report. Or we can say, the decision will affect not only our school, but the educational system at large. And now let's practice your accent. 
I will read the article again and I will pause to give you a chance to repeat. Altman shared that his mid-November sudden removal from OpenAI proved a learning experience, both for him and the company at large. We always said that some moment like this would come, said Altman. I didn't think it was going to come so soon. But I think we are stronger for having gone through it. Let's look at some more sentences to learn some additional vocabulary. It's the world that sci-fi has promised us for a long time. And for the first time, I think we could start to see what that's going to look like. Still, like any other previous powerful technology, that will lead to incredible new things, he says. But there are going to be real downsides. Altman admits that there are challenges that demand close attention. One particular concern to be wary of, with 2024 elections on the horizon, is how AI stands to influence democracies. Let's look at the word sci-fi. Sci-fi is science fiction. Sam Altman said, it's the world that sci-fi has promised us for a long time. And we can say it like this. I like to watch sci-fi films. AI used to only be in sci-fi films, but now it's happening in real life. And let's look at the word downsides. Downsides are negative parts or disadvantages. And he said there are going to be real downsides. And we can use downsides this way. It's a beautiful city, but there are many downsides to living here. What are the downsides to living where you live? The downside to living in Los Angeles is that there is a lot of traffic. Are there any downsides to your job? Let's look at the word wary. To be wary is to be careful because you think something might be dangerous or harmful. To be cautious or to be suspicious. He said, one particular concern to be wary of. We can say, we need to teach our children to be wary of strangers. Or, I'm a bit wary of giving them my credit card number over the phone. Okay, let's look at the next word, stands to. He said, how AI stands to influence democracy. Stands to means it has the potential to, or it is likely to influence democracy or the results could be. And we can use stands to this way. The company stands to lose financially if this deal falls through. Or the recent discoveries in medical research stand to revolutionize healthcare. Or you should take this opportunity. You stand to gain a lot from this opportunity. Let's read the article again so that you can practice your accent. Repeat after me. It's the world that sci-fi has promised us for a long time. And for the first time, I think we could start to see what that's going to look like. Still, like any other previously powerful technology, That will lead to incredible new things, he says. But there are going to be real downsides. Altman admits that there are challenges that demand close attention. One particular concern to be wary of with 2024 elections on the horizon is how AI stands to influence democracies. And now it's time for your review quiz to find out how many of these words you remember. Let's get started. If we want to say, he spoke very honestly, we can say what? He spoke very Candidly. 
candidly. Did you get that one correct? Let's look at the next one. If we want to say that actor became very famous, we can say he became a blank name. Household, a household name. Let's go on to the next one. If we want to say he was fired or he was removed from an important job, we can say he was blank from his position. Past tense. Ousted. He was ousted. And the noun is ousting. Let's go on to the next one. If we want to say, but later they decided to bring him back. He got his job back. Then we can say he was blank. Reinstated. He was reinstated. And the noun is reinstatement. If we want to say there are many possible solutions to this issue, we can say the solutions to this issue are blank, blank. Two words. Wide ranging, wide ranging. Did you get that one right? Okay, finish this sentence. I thought the solution would be easy, but it blank to be difficult. It proved to be difficult. Let's go on to the next one. Finish this sentence. The decision will affect not only our hospital, but the healthcare system blank. Two words. That means the entire. The healthcare system at large. The healthcare system at large. Let's go on to the next one. If we want to ask, what are the negative aspects of the job? We can say, what are the blanks of the job? Downsides. What are the downsides of the job? Okay, and now let's go on to the final question. If I want to say, I don't feel comfortable giving them my credit card number, we can say, I am blank of giving them my credit card number. What's the answer? I am wary. I'm wary of giving them my credit card number. How did you do? How many mistakes did you make? If you only made one mistake, congratulations, good job. But if you made more than one mistake, watch this video again. Practice the vocabulary by making your own sentences. And it's a good idea to practice your accent again by reading after me. The more you practice, the better you will get. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To take your English to the final level of fluency, get my online courses, the American Accent Course, the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English course, and the newest course, Phrasal Verbs for Fluent English. You can save $200 when you buy the super bundle of all three courses. Go to accurateenglish.com.